welcome back once again fellow DIY auto enthusiasts on the YouTube channel I am back again with another small project this is my 97 Camry with about 222,000 miles on it. it's the four-cylinder automatic transmission uh, I just did a video on having to uh, flush the transmission fluid I haven't posted that yet but it should go up here soon and uh, this is a ongoing problem I've had uh, this particular issue is going to be a mystery noise it's a bit of a challenge uh, just a little bit of a history again 220,000 miles on it uh, I replaced the head gasket oh, about a year ago maybe just a little over a year ago and this mystery noise has been there and to me it sounds vacuum ish so I know that uh, that uh, I've, I've checked things such as the EGR. I know the EGR is working fine. Uh, I did have a small leak last night because the inner diameter of the tubing that fit onto the fitting of the EGR was actually a little bit too large and I kept popping the P0401 code and it was just a, a bit of a, a leak there. So EGR is good. I checked the modulator. That's good so now what I'm going to do is uh, check a few of the things you know the one thing I didn't do uh, when I took this apart I cleaned the throttle body I mean I took uh, sea foam and a toothbrush and it, it does have a tendency to carbon up about once a year I have to clean the throttle body on this automobile and it does like I say have a tendency to carbon up but what I didn't do I remember taking it off but I really didn't check it was the idle air control so uh, I'm going to set this back up I'm going to open up the air box crank the car up and let you actually hear this noise so let me get set up and uh, we'll crank up the car I'm here at the air box and I do have it propped open I think that's uh, one of the best times to actually hear this noise now it does have a tendency to be most prominent when the engines cold and it warms up uh, it'll do it intermittently and I did have a guy come by about a year ago he has his own uh, scope snap-on scope and so he does you know mobile work came by and said well it's definitely not a misfire so it's really not electrical at this point so that kind of led me to believe um, it is vacuumish let's crank this up and see if we can hear it She got it on camera now, it doesn't want to do it. See if I snap the throttle. Yeah, that's the way it is. The car goes wumpa 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 until you take it to the mechanic, then it doesn't go wumpa 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 anymore. Very subtle. It's there, but it's very subtle. Usually it's a lot more prominent. There we go. Hopefully you heard it there. Now, I have unplugged the idle air control. And now it runs smoother. Let me wrap it up a minute.
All right, let me reach in here, plug it back in. Sorry, I was in the way of the lens. Hear it? Kind of a, almost like a backfire. Take it off, it immediately stops. All right, now let me show you where the idle air control is. It lives below the throttle body. Here's your throttle body here. And here's the idle air control. Let's see if I can zoom in a little. Right there. And that great connector is the electrical connector. So, it's probably going to be one of two things. Either the idle air control is gummed up, which it has a tendency to do, or I've got maybe a signal problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the air box so I can get to this and see how freely the mechanism moves. Oh, here is the uh, hose I was talking about while I was getting my PO401 code. So right now I just did the shade tree mechanic thing. The diameter, inner diameter of this new hose was not tight enough to fit here. So I just put a smaller one on for now. So let me take the air box off and see if I can get this to, uh, if I can take this apart so we can look at it and see if it's gummed up. So I've taken the air cleaner off and again you're looking from the driver's side. Here's your throttle body. Let me get that screen. There's your throttle body. And what I'm looking for is a small port in here. I'll get a close up of that in a minute. Here's the idle air control. And here's the connector. Now, what I'm going to do, there are three hoses connected to the idle air control. There's one over here for coolant. There's another one over here for coolant. Then the one in the center goes down to the crankcase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that center hose that goes to the crankcase. I'm going to remove the idle air control and there's going to be a pintle in there. And that pintle is a left and right. It has a magnet around it. That's what this is for, there's a signal wire. So it'll turn left and right, not like a pintle in and out. It's more of a flapper this way and that way. So I have the feeling that thing is getting stuck. So I'm going to pull this off go to the pentel and we'll turn it and see what happens. Now these two screws, this is a new idle air control. I think I did put a new idle air control on about a year ago. They were tough to get off and it's very easy to strip these Phillips head bolts. So I took my little impact wrench and that little impact takes them off very easily without stripping things. So here's that pintle. Now it seems to move fairly freely. See that magnet, north and south, will do this way, not in and out. It seems to move rather freely. But as a precaution, I'm going to go ahead and clean this anyway. Let's see if you can see this. There's the port from the throttle body right here. I may have to, whoops, I'm out of the, out of frame there. Let's see, let me go up here. There it is. Now you see that port there. Right inside the throttle body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this lower hose off and put a cup under there and put some, maybe put a cap on it spray some uh, carb cleaner or throttle body cleaner in there and let it sit and soak and put the cap under there so it'll hold it and then eventually put a little cup under there and drain it but that's what I'm going to do next I've decided I'm going to take the entire throttle body off clean it one more time check the idle air control and I was mistaken I only have two hoses and that's for the coolant there and there. And then we'll take these 
12 millimeter bolts or three of those remove the hoses pull this off and take a look at things I know I discovered something here's my air filter does that look a little bit chewed up to you How about right there and I lift up the air filter hello somebody's been nesting uh, actually on this car oh look at the bottom side at one time I would turn the fan motor on and it's like a four-speed motor and it would wobble a little bit then turn up second speed wobble more third speed wobble even more fourth speed oh my god you thought it was gonna fly off you know it's a squirrel cage blower I wonder what the heck is that you know have I lost a bearing but it didn't squeal so you know unplugged the connector inside there and undid the three or four bolts and I found a dead mouse and apparently over time the centrifugal force had embedded him into the blades of the squirrel cage blower now why I didn't smell anything I don't know he was toasty he'd been dead a while well, that was the funniest thing I don't think I took pictures of it but man he was flat as a pancake from that centrifugal force but man I tell you they uh, they can get in places you can't believe so let me go in here and take this off all right so we have things off the car now it's not uh, a lot of connections it's not really difficult so here's your throttle body over here this is going to be the back side of the car toward the firewall that's going to be the throttle position sensor so it's electrical um, your idle air control is here and it's attached on the bottom it's getting here in the sunlight a little bit it's a cloudy day so I'll be taking that off those four screws out to see um, how much carbon might be in there and uh, Here's your butterfly, and that chamber is looking a little bit dark to me. I'll uh, see if I can get a let me get a flashlight and shine down in there. That'll give you a slightly better perspective. Oh, a little tip here: whenever you're working on a gravel driveway, um, always put a piece of cardboard under there because I can guarantee you, you're going to drop something. And trying to find it in a gravel driveway is a real pistol. Hey, see where my flashlight is? There's the intake manifold where I'm pointing with my flashlight here. That's the intake manifold where all that came from. Let's go back up here and see how carbon carbon is. If I can get my flashlight on. Hold on. Actually, not as bad as I thought it would be. I could have sworn I cleaned all this so down in here. But I'm going to, again, since I'm at this point, I'm going to take it off and double check it. So I removed the four screws, and there is a little rubber gasket right here. And this is what it looks like. Now you'll see here, see the little flapper? It seems to be pretty clean. But I'll clean out some more anyway. Now that little rubber gasket seems to have some pliability to it, so I'll shoot stuff out, clean up a little bit more. But again, that flapper seems to be moving fairly well, but I'm going to clean up anyway. Now, this is an adjustment. You can see the mark there. This was done at the factory. You really don't need to, let's get that further down there, you really don't need to do anything with this particular plate. It'll knock it out of adjustment. Okay, sports fans, so um, I have determined that I do have a vacuum leak. 
and that's probably what's causing this issue. Now, the noise you hear in the background is my setup, my homemade smoker machine. So what I have is a, an old nebulizer connected to a plastic bottle, which I have aluminum foil in the bottom. And yes, I had to eat a lot of cashews from a Costco to empty this out. And I have another line. The orange line is an old piece of uh, compressor line. So what I've done is I have take the, I take the uh, O2 line from the nebulizer, which forces air into the canister, or the little plastic bottle. As you can see, it's smoky. In the bottom of this line, I take those cheap cigars, the 79 cent cigars that you can get at the uh, gas and sip, stuck it up in there, lit it, close the top, it makes a lot of smoke and it forces it through here. I've gone into the brake booster here. Now of course you'll see air rising from certain places like the EGR of course. I've blocked off the um, throttle body so there'll be some leakage there which is expected. So right there's the EGR and there's the modulator. But I was getting it from down underneath. Now the only thing under there on this back side is the intake manifold which I thought oh god if I got a leak I have to do that again and that vacuum switching valve that comes up um, I believe to the EGR there's two two lines I'll have to try and remember which is which but let me climb underneath and show you that the new line that I put on apparently the inside diameter is a little bit too large now if you notice here too I kept having that P401 code on this line, as you see, I put a little T in there because the line I got was not tight enough. So when I put it on the EGR, it would set a P0401 code. I would erase it, crank up the car, and it would set it again. It was just that large a leak. So what I'm going to do is now go under the car. I'll get another piece of line there, and I'll go under the car and show you where this leak is. Well, I got up under the car, and that first cigar ran out. But this is how I put the cigar in. And then I will screw that into the bin here, and I will, or the plastic jug, and I will then uh, attach this to the brake booster. But I, I got up under the car, and I was going to show you, and I kept, I ran out of smoke. So let's try this again. Okay, there she is. If you look right there, it's very subtle. Hopefully I can zoom in a little bit there. It's very subtle, but there's smoke coming out. So I know at least that line has a leak because the diameter, inside diameter is too large. I need to go get some more cigars. Oh, there's a little bit there very very faint the first cigar I used it was great but I didn't have the camera with me by the time I got the camera set up I got it and there are three lines there I'm just gonna go ahead and replace them since I'm under here I'm gonna get me some more vacuum tube and a smaller diameter I'll be back now you can see it I hope that's focused. It puffs along every now and again. Now this is again a, a vacuum switching valve. I'm under the passenger side wheel. It's a bear to get to. I'm right under the axle. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Yeah, you can see it. All right, let's go into town and get some more vacuum line. Thank you. 